Switch Pro, Switch 2, however you want to call it, the successor to 2017's wildly successful Switch is on its way. Details are thin on the ground though at the moment, but we do have some reasonable information about what and how. Now this is just a guesstimate from me, but I imagine the Switch 2 or Switch Pro as you may call it, will be targeting the same 720p resolution as the initial Switch from 2017 in its handheld mode. That resolution is a power and performance sweet spot for a mobile handheld screen size. And I don't think Nintendo will necessarily need to increase its resolution to have a compelling handheld experience. Dock mode I think will be decidedly different this time with Nintendo's Switch 2 or Switch Pro targeting 4K screens. 4K screens are much more ubiquitous now than they were at the Switch's launch in 2017, and new technologies have come into existence which could possibly make a 4K docked experience a reality. A small, low-powered gaming device targeting 4K gaming experiences? Is that really possible when even power-hungry consoles like the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X do not always have enough to manage 4K? In theory, yes. As to how a Switch 2 could do 4K, clues can be found by looking toward the very latest Tegra hardware system on a chip from NVIDIA called Orin. The Orin SoC is based on NVIDIA's Ampere architecture and contain the CPU and GPU which the next Switch will most likely be built upon. Since this SoC uses Ampere architecture, which powers the latest RTX 3000 GPUs on PC, that means it features NVIDIA's Tensor Cores, which drive NVIDIA's Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS as it's called. DLSS has been a key innovation for NVIDIA in the PC space, and works by having a small AI program run on these Tensor Cores on the GPU, which then takes lower resolution images and transforms them into higher resolution images by the AI program combining information from multiple frames over time. With DLSS, a Switch 2 could have a realistic avenue to drive ultra-high resolutions like 4K. That is, assuming Switch 2 has the performance to do DLSS at interactive frame rates. According to NVIDIA, the Orin SoC's machine learning capabilities max out at around 200 tensor operations per second at 45 watts, which is more than enough to run DLSS 2.2, but Switch 2 will definitely not be running at 45 watts. For example, the original Switch's max power consumption was around 10 to 11 watts in game based upon our experiences and tests in docked mode. So clearly the Switch 2 would need an SoC in the 10 watt range or so. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Nvidia has a chip that covers this ultra low power bracket with its NDAS version of Orin. This is running at 5 watts by default, and this chip looks to be a realistic contender for Switch 2's power budget. If Switch 2 were to use this chip and target a similar SoC wattage like we saw in that initial launch version of the Switch in 2017, Switch 2 would have around 20 int 8 tops or tensor operations for machine learning calculations at 10 watts in its docked mode. Those 20 tops though are for the dock mode, where I imagine the handheld mode would have half the theoretical performance, much like we saw back with the original Switch. And I think as a result of this lower theoretical performance, Switch 2 in its handheld mode, which would probably also be targeting a lower screen resolution like I mentioned earlier of 720p, well, I imagine it just won't actually necessarily need DLSS and could use that performance elsewhere. So I imagine DLSS would really only come into play theoretically in a docked experience where you have that extra wattage and power. Would this theoretical performance be enough to run 4K DLSS on a Switch to enable 4K gaming in dock mode? To investigate this question, we can look at the situation on PC and do some fuzzy maths to see where Switch 2 might end up. Here in Doom Eternal that I'm showing right now, I'm using the latest DLSS version running on an RTX 2060 with its clock averaging at 1800 MHz, meaning around 110.6 int 8 tops here. Around 5.5 times more machine learning capability in real time than a theoretical Switch 2. On the left hand side, I'm going to add in an image here of the game running internally at 1080p without anti-aliasing and just being upscaled to 4K with the game's native scaler with a 4K HUD. 
Essentially, the left hand and right hand images here have the exact same internal resolution, but the right hand image with DLSS has DLSS anti-aliasing and DLSS reconstruction of that image up to 4K. By measuring the performance difference between these two scenarios left and right, we can get a snapshot at the individual end-to-end -end cost of DLSS 2.2 and Doom Eternal. 1080p without anti-aliasing is around 110 frames per second here, while 4K DLSS at that same internal resolution is around 90 FPS. The number we're interested in here though is not the frames per second difference, but the cost of DLSS per frame. On the left, each frame is rendered on average in 9.2 milliseconds, and on the right with DLSS, it's 11.1 milliseconds on average. The difference means an end-to-end -end added cost for DLSS that is 1.9 milliseconds to give the game its anti-aliasing and make it look like a 4K image. Now, the total cost of DLSS is maybe higher, as Doom Eternal does have asynchronous compute, which can hide some performance costs, but this is the end-to-end -end increase in milliseconds, and it gives us a great base to work with for assessing what Switch 2 might have. Assuming a linear scaling factor between 110.6 tops of the 2060 here from this scenario to 20 tops of a possible Switch 2, 4K DLSS could add around 10.5 milliseconds end-to-end -end per frame on that theoretical Switch 2 hardware in a game like Doom Eternal. Now bear with me here as there's some numbers to go through to talk about how realistic this is on a Switch 2. For a 60 FPS game on this theoretical Switch 2 using DLSS to get to 4K, DLSS would be taking around 63% of the actual rendering time where each frame needs to be 16.6 milliseconds at 60 FPS. That means the rest of the rendering, not including DLSS, would have to be done in around 6.2 milliseconds. That means the game would have to be running at 162 frames per second before even DLSS was being added. I don't think that's a very realistic number, honestly, for a game with modern visuals and features on a low power mobile gaming device. Assuming DLSS costs this much at 4K on Switch 2, I think 60 FPS might be out of the question on average. Rather, I imagine games utilizing DLSS with modern rendering features would instead target 30 frames per second. At 30 frames per second, where each frame takes 33.3 milliseconds to render, DLSS would take up 32% of the rendering time in that one frame. That would leave the rest of the rendering without DLSS to be done in 22.8 milliseconds. And you know what? That's actually quite a lot of time to do rendering. 22.8 milliseconds is actually a lot of rendering time to make a really complex and detailed 1080p image on modern systems like the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, but those peak at around 200 watts for the entire system. Switch 2, which would have 1 20th of the power draw of those big consoles in dock mode probably, would have a hard time perhaps targeting such a high internal resolution at 1080p with such modern rendering features. For the same reason, the Steam Deck from Valve is not targeting 1080p for its modern games. Rather, it is targeting 1280 by 800 at 30 FPS to maximize the amount of shading power it can dedicate to single pixels. This is exactly what I imagine a hypothetical Switch 2 would do, but Switch 2 would also have the advantage of DLSS on top. This is where DLSS Ultra Performance Mode comes into this theoretical picture. 4K DLSS Performance Mode runs games internally at 1080p and reconstructs them up to 4K. 4K DLSS in Ultra Performance Mode runs them internally at a much smaller 720p and then utilizes DLSS to upscale to 4K. DLSS cost, though, remains the same as it does in Performance Mode as it's tied to the output resolution. But now the GPU can spend that 22 milliseconds or so at 30 FPS, to shade fewer pixels. That means much prettier, but less pixels. Here I imagine a Switch 2 would run internally then at 720p and pour all of its rendering power into those 22 or so milliseconds. In such a situation like this one, DLSS would be magnifying the Switch 2's resolution capabilities by nine times. But how does it actually look in the end? How does this 4K Ultra Performance Mode DLSS hold up in practice? Does it really enhance resolution fidelity by nine times? Well, let's look at a couple test examples here. 
First, let's answer the obvious question in the room. Does it actually look anything like a real 4K? Now, I've looked at this in other videos in the past, examining ultra performance mode at 8K and even at 4K with the latest DLSS version. Now, I've come to the conclusion that essentially, it does not actually look like a real native 4K, as there are a number of issues that occur when reconstructing from such a low resolution and amplifying it by nine times. You have some temporal issues where there could be a moire pattern forming or a little bit of ghosting here or there. Or you can have detail not resolving perfectly like you may see in a real native 4K image. Unlike DLSS in performance mode or quality mode above that, ultra performance mode will definitely not have any image characteristics or features that are usually better than native quality like we see in those performance and quality modes. But I didn't really expect that anyway, and rather the point I'm going to make through other examples here is that the image quality you get from ultra low performance mode doesn't necessarily look like a perfect native 4K, rather that it looks rather excellent in comparison to its initial rendering resolution of 720p, and that it's awesome on a 4K display actually. So even though it doesn't look like a perfect 4K, ultra low performance mode will actually look pretty great. And I think a great way to show that off is to show it next to the original resolution that it is internally running at, and that is 720p. Here in Doom Eternal, on the PC, we have a native 720p image with TAA, which has been scaled using nearest neighbor scaling to preserve the pixels in a raw form so they don't look even more blurry. Now let's add that DLSS image, which is the same 720p internal resolution on the right hand side, but DLSS is taking that image up to 4K. The DLSS image has the exact same internal 720p pixels here, but I think it looks nothing the same. Nothing at all like the internal 720p resolution, that's for sure. It's essentially taking 720p pixels, each one of them, and they're broken down into nine smaller pixels with the added detail from DLSS. This example though has the camera being still, where the frames over time are very similar to one another, which makes DLSS perform even better. Let us see what it looks like in motion in comparison. Here we have the opening cutscene of the game, which is full of camera motion with a swooping camera. And here I've slowed down the footage to one third speed so that YouTube can resolve it better for you and the audience. So you can see the difference better. If we look at the background star field here, for example, or planet Earth, or the debris field around planet Earth, we can see what DLSS is doing to its internal 720p pixels. It has a rather dramatic effect. Do you think this is nine times better looking here? Well, it's hard to quantify, I would say, but I think it is more than acceptable image quality on a 4K set, that's for sure. But Doom Eternal, as I'm showing it here, was not the use case I was necessarily mentioning earlier. The footage I'm showing here is all rendered at 60 FPS, which means all the frames are spatially closer to one another and increasing DLSS's effectiveness. In actuality, I mentioned that Switch 2 games that would use DLSS for 4K would probably target 30 FPS due to the cost of DLSS. So how does DLSS hold up at 30 frames per second? Does it break down more easily and can you see the 720p pixels inside it more easily? Well, here we have Metro Exodus running at 720p with TAA and nearest neighbor upscaled to 4K like I showed earlier in Doom Eternal but this time the game is locked to 30 FPS. Now let's add in 4K DLSS Ultra Performance Mode on the right hand side, which is running that same internal resolution and of course 30 FPS frame rate. Even here where I have turned off motion blur on purpose to make the image faults more obvious, I really think DLSS is doing a transformative job to its internal 720p image. Even though the image has a lot of movement with the camera, the train, the car in the foreground and all the scenery moving, it is still holding up. So yeah, I think a Switch 2 with this technology to produce 4K images would end up having surprisingly awesome image quality even in this realistic scenario where a game would be targeting 30 FPS. As I see it, 4K DLSS seems to be a great technical possibility for Switch 2, especially at 30 FPS where the internal 720p resolution 
makes it so that each pixel can have the highest quality possible. But this is just one possible scenario for DLSS and Switch 2. Another scenario would be that games would not target 4K due to the cost of DLSS at that resolution. Nintendo games, for example, rarely are anything but 60 FPS these days. So I would find it hard to imagine they would sacrifice frame rate for higher image quality. Instead, games like those from Nintendo could target 60 FPS at a lower resolution while still using DLSS, like 1440p or even lower at 1080p. DLSS reconstruction at 1440p has just about half the performance cost of 4K DLSS, which based on my napkin calculus would be around 5.2 milliseconds on that fabled Switch 2. That leaves quite a lot more rendering time on the side for games to realistically target 60 FPS as I see it. The other scenario is that Nvidia develops a specific version of DLSS for lower end GPUs like those found in Switch 2. Perhaps a version that requires less performance at the cost of some quality or robustness of the image reconstruction. Perhaps they could even half the cost of DLSS. In such a case, the produced image might not look as great, but 60 FPS games using 4K DLSS might become more possible, or those games targeting 30 FPS at 4K could have even better shading and graphics as it's spending less time rendering DLSS. It's hard to say what might end up happening with the specific implementation and what developers might choose, but based upon this little thought experiment here and the cost of DLSS 2.2 on PC, I think it's very realistic that we will see DLSS on Switch 2, and it will definitely amplify that device's visual fidelity in the titles where it's used. Now we just have to wait and see as to how it pans out in the end when more concrete details about the Switch 2 device emerge. But that is enough for me for now. If you did enjoy this little theoretical video talking about Switch 2 and DLSS, please do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to support DF, join our Patreon to enable content like this in the future, and you can also talk to us there on Discord and get years worth of our content in high quality for download. If you want to talk to me about DLSS on Switch 2 or any sort of theoretical stuff like that, well, write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.